All right, we're here. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome to the CCA Calisthenics uh, first podcast. Uh, we're honored to have our first guest and new member of the CCA team, Mr. Adam Sandell. Please introduce yourself. Thanks, Q. Adam Sandell, glad to be here, glad to be a part of the team. I go by Professor Pull-Ups, and I'm the, the current Guinness World Record holder for most pull-ups in a minute, and uh, I'm here to talk pull-ups. Everything and anything pull-up, I'll give my two cents, and uh, we'll try to talk on how to increase those reps. All right, so first of all, first and foremost, the name. And let me, quick introduction, I'm Q, Q France on Instagram, um, you know, um, co-founder of CCA. Uh, that's the basics of it. We're going to get back to my man, Adam. So first and foremost, why Professor Pull-Up, except for the obvious reason. Did you come up with the name before or after the world record? <laughs> <laughs> I think I came up with it just after, but the, the name has a double meaning. It's I, I like to think of myself as Someone, well, I love pull-ups, but someone who's an analyst of the pull-up because in going for these records, you have to be methodical about thinking how you're going to increase your reps. And so I like to study the pull-up and to, to try to gain any little edge that I can. Um, so that's professor pull-ups. And also I happen to, to teach as my day job. So I'm a professor. I teach philosophy. So there you go, professor pull-ups. How much, how much, that's interesting that you are uh, actually an educator. Um, how, mu how important do you think it is uh, based on what you've seen so far and what motivated you to go for the world record as far as what you think people see as their best when it comes to pull-ups? Like, um, did you like look at the videos and say, uh, okay, they're not thinking about this the way I am. They didn't go through the process that I did. Uh, there's a lot of tips that I know that they didn't know that I'm willing to teach them when you went into this process or you just went out and said, I want to just test myself. Yeah, it was definitely about testing myself. And, but in that process, I definitely studied competitors. You know, you look at the previous record holders, you look at right. people who are on YouTube and Instagram who are putting up impressive sets and you're just studying what is it that they do. Um, and I'm just trying to take in everything and learn from anybody um, who's doing this, who's going to increase my reps. So I try to be attentive, but I also try to be analytical. Like when I'm doing a workout, what is it that I'm doing maybe a little bit differently that is giving me an edge. Um, try to be attentive to my own body and the movement. So we can definitely talk about that because the pull-up seems simple, but I mean, as you know, it's super complex in terms of how do you put your legs? What's the angle at which you pull up to the bar? Um, what does a training right. plan look like? Okay, all right. So um, one quick question before we get down to technicalities. Um, were the, was there anyone that uh, motivated you or helped influence you to start your pull-up path? Absolutely. I mean, or I think- journey that, rather, yeah, your pull-up journey. Yeah, many, many people, too, too many to name, and I won't even try to name all of them. I know I'm gonna leave somebody out, but going back to the very first trainer that I ever had, I was 17 years old, just trying to get stronger for baseball. You know, I played a lot of sports and I was always a, a small kid. Um, so I was trying to put on some muscle, you know, hit, hit home runs, throw harder. And my trainer told me, look, you got to do full body. You've got to do squats, deadlifts, bench press, but pull-ups. He's like big movements, um, you know, not these bicep curls. So he impressed pull-ups on me. And, and uh, so he was very influential. But then later, like, as I started getting into the record, just um, seeing people who were doing it, a guy, Ron Cooper, who I now have the, the privilege to train with, who I read about, who had set a number of records and pull-ups, I... I've become uh, very close to him and, and he kind of helped show me the ropes and then just other people, um, you know, just watching these days on YouTube and, and Instagram and seeing, seeing, uh, seeing others doing it, whether they're former record holders or not, was, has been super inspirational. And, uh, you know, of course, now getting into the, the Brooklyn calisthenic scene, pull-ups park jam, see, you know, seeing what you do, seeing what other players have 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 done uh to increase their reps uh is, is super inspirational i take in all of it okay all right good i like to hear that um all right so we're gonna get down to the nitty-gritty 
everybody wants to know how to increase their pull-ups, uh, what routines they can use, what secret tips and all these other things. Uh, let's start from, from ground bottom. Let's start with the person that can do a few pull-ups and just wants to increase that and get to 10. What is a, a, a couple tips that you can give somebody that is trying to get to 10 pull-ups? One tip I would give is you've got to increase your reps. And when you're beginning, it's tough because you do a set of say five pull-ups and that's your max. And then the next set you get four, the next set you get three, and you maybe rest a couple of minutes and get a few more triples or doubles. And then you say, okay, I'm done. I, I don't have any energy left, but we have to do is find a way to get the volume up. And one thing that I really like is assistance pull-ups. You can just string a band from the top of the bar, put your knee through the band, and then you get more reps. So what I always like to do is go heavy to light. So if you're a beginner, heavy is just going to be your own body weight. So you do three reps, four reps, five reps, and try to do like maybe five sets, five sets of four, five sets of five. And I like to try to gauge it. Like you want to finish at least as strong as you started. So if your first set's five reps, you better be getting five reps on the fifth set. You don't want to fall off. Right. And, and I think the reason for that is you just want to be able to chart your progress. And if you can't get five by five, try five sets of four. If you can't get five by four, right. try five sets of three. And then once you get five sets of three, you get to add a fourth rep on the last set. So you know you're building it from the last set out. But then after that heavy part of the workout, get the assistance reps in. So you get the volume higher. So each workout, you're working your muscles enough to progress. I got, I like that. I like the fact that you said you don't go down in the number um, because that's a, that's a major key. A lot of people, a lot of people tend to just settle for the lesser number. You have to have a scale, a scalable uh, amount of reps to know how you progress. You know, um, one thing I, I love, I love that tip. Um, I'm not a big advocate for the band, only for those that are just starting out. Um, like you said, just, like we said, just getting to 10. Um, I like to add the bands to it, but um, definitely major key. If everyone's listening, <laughs> if five is that number that you're hitting, you make sure that you continue to hit that five until you progress. The goal is to progress like that tip. Um, okay, so what, let's, let's, get, let's get down to um, some little technicalities. So like grips, um, are you a person that grips the bar with the thumb this way or one of these people? I'm, for me, tech, I'm, I'm this person, I'm this person that keeps the thumb here, the thumb here. <laughs> but yeah. it's just like, it's either this or this. Yeah. Which one do you prefer and why? So the answer for me is that it depends. I think actually that thumb under is a stronger grip. So if I'm putting on weight, let's say I'm doing reps with a 45 pound plate, or especially if I've got two plates on, which I sometimes do, thumb's gonna, I'm gonna put the thumb under most likely. Mm -hmm. And the reason that right. I think I can grip the bar stronger because your grip's slipping. But if I'm doing body weight reps, like you say, I like to put the thumb over. And that's for two reasons. One is that it takes some of the pressure off of the forearm. When you put the, the thumb forearms, under, yeah. the forearm fatigues faster. The other reason Absolutely. is it shortens the range, right? Just a little bit. If you put the thumb over, you can kind of get a bit of a bit more false grip and shorten the range for competition pull-ups. So the, those are two reasons. But I think in training, I do both. Maybe like one third of the time, I'll do thumbs under typically for the heavier reps, but otherwise I'll do thumbs yeah. over like you. Yeah, so that, that's, that's exactly what I, I, I do. I usually start with not using the thumb, especially with body weight. But of course, like you said, if you're adding weight or the reps become harder, you start to lose your grip because of your forearms is overused and everything else. So you're going to need that added grip. Um, it was a contest where uh, it was a dead hand contest and I actually helped the guy win because I told him to keep switching his fingers when he would grip okay. the bar. I said, just pinch your finger, keep pinching your fingers when you're about to fall off. And he pinched these two fingers until like the last minute and he wound up winning the money for it. So these are all tactics to just keep you on the bar basically. But, um, that's just a fact that just proves how important your grip strength is and the position of your hand when you're doing these pull-ups. Now for you, somebody that has the world record, um, 
I noticed that you always go a little wider because then you have a shorter range of motion. Um, and um, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you know, chin over the bar, still full lockout um, as opposed to a closer grip, right? So we're talking about a grip like this as opposed to a grip like this. In competitions, right? They tend to only allow you to be here as yeah. opposed to here, right? Because they understand that advantage. It's not necessarily an advantage. It is for some people that have been training like that, like that you know, somebody fresh out might not be comfortable going wide, but um, someone like myself <laughs> who can get another, at least like 10 reps if I go wider, you know, as opposed to going here. Um, but that's all things that you learn and you practice. But for the beginner, yeah, who's just trying to get to 20 straight, do you suggest that they practice here or here? Well, it, for, for beginners, and this includes myself when I was a beginner, I didn't even think about the width of the grip. I just felt whatever's the, the strongest grip that's going to allow me, like you said, to get the chin over and to do full range reps as many as I can, that's the grip I'm going to use. And when I was a beginner, I brought it in much closer. And the reason is you get more leverage. It's, it's actually a stronger grip to bring it in closer. And again, if you, even at a high level, if you go to weighted reps, the grip is going to have to come in a little bit because you can't be out like this with 245s hanging off of you and your shoulders are going <laughs> to rip out of the sockets. And yeah. People are able to, to, to get a little wider, but the point is it's, it's tougher. So there's a trade-off. And I think as a beginner, yeah. what's most important is you just get the reps. You want the reps. It, it, the, 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 the wide thing is like a later stage. If you want to get into competitions and try to shorten the range within whatever parameters, like, yeah, yeah, then, then you focus, but not yeah. as a beginner. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's one of these things that I see all the time, with, um, especially when people overthink it, where you, you have to go with your comfort level first and what makes sense to you. If you start feeling impingements and you feel pain in your shoulders, you shouldn't be feeling that. You have to re-dissect what you did wrong or what you're doing wrong in the process. But um, sometimes just walk up to the bar, put your arms up. And when you grab the bar and you pull, if that feels good, that's your spot. Just don't overthink it. <laughs> but it is good to train within all the different ranges just so you're not getting in a comfort zone in one position because it's, uh, uh, I've been to many competitions where guys would are used to doing wide pull-ups and we tell them they have to get a little closer and it drops their numbers and changes their whole mentality and their whole focus completely. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so what was your first uh, pull-up part jam experience like? It was eye-opening for me in a number of ways. I think the, the thing that struck me most was just how many elite athletes were there. And um, it, elite athletes and also just very good athletes, um, like really respectable, like a lot of talent, a lot, a lot of depth of talent. Like I remember the muscle ops competition and you know, I went in confident because I, I hold a world record in pull-ups. Why wouldn't I be confident? I, I love muscle ups, train muscle ups a lot, but when I saw people putting up for one minute muscle ups, like 12 reps, 14 reps, and, and it, it, that's serious. That's like, that's good. And yeah. that wasn't an uncommon number. And then you get, you know, 16, 18. Okay. Then, then you're talking the to top people, but just the depth of talent. And the other thing was the, the endurance across the board, like the, uh, the ability to turn it around from, from pull-ups and then go to squats and then go to dips. So it's not like you just have specialists in one category, right. but you have some competitors who, you, it's mind boggling. You say, wow, this person's really an elite athlete across the board. So it was that. Plus um, one of the biggest impressions was just the, the community spirit. You know, that this was a group of people who were dedicated to competing, but to, to bolstering each other and to making each other yeah. as good as they could possibly be. And you have rivalries, you have competition, it's great. Um, but you also have the, the encouragement and, and when anyone was up, there'd be a lot of cheering, a lot of support. Mm -hmm. And it was the kind of environment that, that I thought was cultivating of excellence, you know, that, that um, great athletes getting greater. And, 
And that's yeah. what attracted me to it because it can be quite solitary actually to train. Like it's rare to have a, a community like that. And I train a lot by myself as much as I've been influenced by training partners and, and love to train with people. You find yourself alone, you know, especially these days with the pandemic. So anytime you have the chance to, to be a part of that community, I think it's, it's a special thing. Yeah. And, and that's what um, a lot of us in the calisthenic community were drawn to what is the actual community because you come there and you know, you're going to be competing against this against someone and you see that person cheering for you and they're cheering for you just because they're in appreciation of the work that you're doing and knowing that they have to come and do it before you or they did it they did it before you or they're going to be doing it after you but they know what you feel like in the moment and just that appreciation of that moment you know is, is a great experience and that's exactly what we plan on continuing with cca um, is to keep that calisthenic community strong um, educated and uh, keep the community strong and have everyone come out and feel welcomed to come out and display all of their talent. Um, now, I'm trying to think of one other question. I wanna get technical, but not too technical yeah. at the same time. Um, so to break down some of uh, CCA's basic standards as far as pull-up scopes, right? Um, of course, full lockout, just because it's a way of standardizing everything and there needs to be standards. So full lockout, yeah. elbows, not a dead hang lockout, which is here, <laughs> you right. know, so here, which is, um, and, and I know I've seen your face kind of open up <laughs> because you understand the difference between doing a pull up from here and from here, right? It's, a, so, it's an important difference, right? You keep the shoulder yes. blades retracted in one, you straighten at the elbow, but the shoulders right. will kind of pin back retracted. So you get it straight here, but you're not letting your yeah. lats totally release. Exactly. So that's basically the what everyone should think of as a start position when you start doing your pull-ups. You don't start it here because then you still have to get out of your shoulders. So the goal is to get into this position. You have your shoulders retracted, your lats are ready to activate, and then you pull and maintain that position until you rest again. Um, and also chin over the bar. Yeah. Now, I see, a lot I see of times you've, you've grown out the yeah. beard. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And and you know, I get a lot of I get a lot of flack for the beard because you know they say oh, only the tip of the beard is getting over the bar. <laughs> right? So I would make it a point to kind of like bump my collarbone every once in a while. But come on, I'm a competitor. As long as that judge is counting the reps, then I'm gonna continue going. Right, which brings me to uh, another part of uh, your experience at Pull Up Party Jam. I remember you having to do your pull up reps over again. Yeah. Right. And um, if I'm not mistaken, when they came to me, because I was one of the head judges at the time, it came to me and said it was a, a matter of um, you not hearing the count or some, something along those lines. Um, let me know if I'm mistaken, but it was um the count was mis was was mistaken so you wind up having to do it over which is probably one of the first times i've seen that happen um what was that experience like when you knew you had to do it over again well it, it's a tough spot because you're you're competing and you know you want to put your best foot forward you, you know you think you've done whatever 60 something and you hear 46 and i think part of the issue was seeing whether the chin was actually over. Now I, I've, I'm used to cutting it close because like getting your chin way over versus a little over. Right, um, right. If it's over, it's over um, for, for the Guinness World Record certainly. So because all the other competitors are cutting it so close, you want to cut it close. And in, in fairness to judges, it, it's super hard to see, especially if somebody's doing fast reps and you've got a judge standing under the bar, it's, it's tough to see. Um, and it's just a tough role to judge. You know, I, I think of like pro professional umpires in sports, how tough it is to, to see a close play. And it's the same thing for judging pull-ups, push-ups. Um, so it was just a discrepancy. You know, I thought the reps were all good. The, the judge had docked a number of them, but partly it was a knowledge thing, a communication thing where, where um, the point I made is I've got to know right when, right when it's happening so I can make the adjustment. Because if, right. if I don't hear no rep, I don't know that I need to make an adjustment. And if you're talking at, you know, 10, 15 reps, 
where the, the margins are this thin, it's like, well, yeah, you could have gotten those reps clearly. Maybe yeah. if you yeah. had to get it over a little more, you'd be a couple reps fewer, but not that many <laughs> fewer, you know? Yeah, that's quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> so that's, that's quite, quite a bit. bit. And, and that's, yeah, and, I just, and again, that's one of the things. We, yeah, that's one of the things we plan on changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because wow. um, it 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 is it is like I said, it, the the margin of error is is always there, but the communication has to be there, you know. Even if the judge doesn't know, if he repeats the number or just lets you know as you break that, hey, watch your chin. I'm watching your chin. You might be deducted if you if your chin it uh, doesn't go for the bar visibly. So all of that communication is definitely necessary. And again, that's one of the things that we plan on bringing to CCA in a very uh, uh, obvious way to all the athletes. Um, trying to think of, I had one other question. I think you kind of covered it <laughs> when it came to um, um, your body positioning and so forth. Um, how important do you think it is to uh, like not unlock your legs when it comes to a pull-ups? Like I know a lot of people cross their legs um, as opposed to just keeping your legs together and that core activation, how yeah. necessary is it in the process of getting that two minutes worth of reps and so forth? That's a good question. You know, I used to cross my legs when I did pull-ups at a certain point. I think I just messed around with different placements of my legs. You know, I didn't think about my legs that much until I got into competition and then certain rules say, no, your legs have to be straight you know, maybe you can bend your knees a little, but your hips have to be straight. So then I thought, okay, do I cross them? Do I not cross them? But I think for a beginner, again, I would say do what feels comfortable. If you're crossing them, it can create an imbalance because the leg that you cross over the other one, you know, you might want to think about switching it up because it does slightly alter your body, which yeah. is why I like both legs hanging. That's what I would advise anyone actually. But whether the knees are bent, uh, whether the legs are straight. I think it's for a beginner based on feel. Like I wouldn't be too worried about that. Maybe experiment with different leg placements. But again, it's getting back to that full range, like you were saying, chin, chin over, um, lock the elbows. Like that's what you want to be impressing upon someone as a beginner. And then you can get into the fine points. And I would say legs are like a semi fine point. You know, it matters for competition um but the uh yeah i think a number of leg placements can work um yeah but, yeah but it's i think it's i think it's pretty much what you said it's um when you're starting out and you're learning just <laughs> learn to like it first <laughs> you know don't let, learn to like it. don't try don't do it the hard way first do it the way that you can get numerous reps first build the strength up and then from there, you can go on and, and um, learn to do it more strict, um, even a dead stop pull up. Um, how, matter of fact, that's a good question. How, how official do you think a dead stop pull up is versus when they just let you go for the minute or two? Dead stop meaning you can't move until you're in the dead hang position and the person judging you taps you on the back and tells you you can go. I think the dead stop is very official in the sense that it makes for a competition that's easy to judge. Mm. Things don't happen as quickly. The judge can make sure you're not kipping, which means, of course, momentum with, with the lower body, with the legs. Um, why I, I don't like the dead stop as the only standard is that I think there is a skill in itself of being very quick and explosive. So you, wa you want to reward somebody who's able to wrap out really fast in a short period of time because it indicates a kind of explosive power that dead hangs doesn't test as much. So the way I see it is that it's two separate events. I think dead hangs yes. are great. I think they're easy to judge. I think they're strict. Um, I think they do favor grip strength more because to, to be really good at dead hangs, you got to have the grip strength. And if you can hold that grip, you can get a lot of reps. So the skill set changes actually between dead hang and like a one shot max set as fast as you can go. Um, I think there's overlap. If you're good at pull-ups, you're good at pull-ups. You should be able to compete at both. And that's the standard I always try to hold myself to be good at everything. Dead stop, yeah. regular, 
narrow grip, wide grip, it really doesn't matter. If the rules are the same for everybody and it's standardized, um, I'll be there and I'll, yeah. I'm going to beat you. You know, it's, it, it, it's like, <laughs> I'm going to do my best at least. And yeah. you know, if I lose doing my best, uh, that that's in a way a positive because it tells me I need to improve. But the point is, it, it's consistency of, of judging, like getting back to your main point. And I think the sport of calisthenics uh, has room for multiple styles. Like we, there could be a dead hang. There could be as fast as you can in one minute. Uh, there could be a competition where you say you got to actually touch the bar to your collarbone, um, not just chin over. Uh, chest to bar pull-ups, I think are great. I train with those a lot. So um, it's really just about consistency, holding all the competitors to the same standard. Yeah, and, and, and that brings us again to CCA. Um, what everyone needs to understand is that we're making, we're starting a, a league where, and a traveling referee <laughs> committee and group that literally, if you are an organization and say, we're gonna do a dead style competition or another organization, we're gonna do two minutes worth of every exercise or whatever, or a circuit, doesn't matter what it is. We can come in with our team of trained judges and adjust to whatever you have, but you just have to follow certain standards, like what we consider a lockout, what we consider a good rep, what we consider a pull up, push up, whatever it is, but you can break it down however you want it. You can be dead stop, you can be uh, the regular two minutes, but it's just not, you're gonna allow them to do whatever they want. It still has to be standardized. And that's all we're bringing. We're bringing standardization back to this calisthenic community or to the community period. You know, yeah. because, you know, let's face it, we, it's, it's been so many years of judges that were volunteers. And I was a volunteer for many years. So now we're actually making it a job. These people are going to be doing a job. They're going to be paid to be paid to do a job. And that job is being a referee, a judge for these events and making sure that we follow the rules of the organization that created the event, even if it's us or somebody else, and making sure that goes smoothly throughout the entire competition without any lacks and you know to the best of our ability um uh one last question i had was about um um we, we were talking about the dead hang i recently saw on youtube uh somebody put up an unofficial record it was like 105 pull-ups straight without getting off the bar um immediately when you hear that right somebody does 105 pull-ups without getting off the bar. What's your immediate thought as far as the equipment that he had to use, the height of this person? <laughs> What's your immediate <laughs> thought? <laughs> My immediate thought is that guy must have some incredible grip strength because, <laughs> because like 100 reps is a lot. I, I wanna, yeah. It's insane. I mean, you have to have phenomenal grip strength. You've gotta have phenomenal balance on the bar for minimal energy expenditure, like when you're resting. Um, you know, when I hear it, I try to imagine what, what does that set look like? Is it within, I, I'm thinking 10 minutes, maybe he's on the bar for 10 minutes. I believe it was about 16 minutes or so. 16 yeah. minutes, okay, there you, even more. So I was thinking yeah. like, you gotta be on the bar for a while. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's impressive, you know, I like to, to give people the benefit. If I don't see something in person, I still like to give people the benefit of the doubt. If there's a reliable video out there, hey, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> I'll give them credit until proven wrong. But yeah, uh, it, it, uh, absolutely. But yeah, you 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 hit it on the head. You hit it on the head. It all starts with that grip strength. And the first thing I thought was how how small is this pole that he's holding on to? <laughs> you know, I like I looked at the video and I'm zooming in to see how thin the pole is because that's also another factor. You know, if it's a thinner pole, you, your grip is better, you know, cause you get to get a closer, closer to a fist than you can ever have, you know, as most pull up bars, um, some people you won't be able to touch your fingertips to your palms. So uh, you have to use a lot more grip strength because of the fact that you can't get the clench as much. So I looked at the video and I, I immediately saw that. I'll like, say that must've been a smaller pole again. 
no did not discredit in this person 105 pull-ups is a lot of pull-ups and um i'll send you the link to this video just so you can yeah. check it out yeah. <laughs> because I, was, I sat there and watched the whole entire thing and i was like okay <laughs> because they were all like clean they were all clean pull-ups um but it all comes down to grip strength and that's another factor that a lot of people when you're training you have to add that to your training your grip strength because that's your last line of defense when it comes to getting a clean pull-up because you can't kip at most competitions to get your chin over the bar. So you can't generate any momentum. You have to rely on your grip strength and your the strength in your back and your biceps, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm kind of, that's pretty much it because I think we're gonna run out of time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how, how much time we have and I don't wanna cut into the time. Are there any questions that you have or anything that you've seen that you wanna um, speak about? Well, I'm, I'm actually curious to, um, well, th th there are many, many questions that I'd like to ask you, but I'll have other chances to do that. I think uh, we're, we're getting- Okay, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this and we'll have that conversation in another podcast. This was just basically a general introduction to you um, and, and what you do and the amazing job that you have done, the record that you have done. Uh, let everyone know where they can find you on all social media. Instagram at professor.pullups. Uh, you can check my YouTube channel as well, uh, Adam Sandel. Um, check out my website, adamsandel.com. And i uh, got a training program that kind of mimics my, my own training. Uh, that's free, you can, you can get it. So uh, that's where to find me. All right, cool. We'll have we also have this information up on our CCA page for you to access immediately. And we'll have Adam in on a lot of the um, things that we're working on in the future. And we're glad to have you on the team. Welcome again to the CCA team. Um, I'm signing off. This is Q from my boy John McLeod uh, in the cloud right now, <laughs> monitoring everything that's going on. We're gonna sign off and look forward to more conversations and more introductions and more work from the CCA reps team, CCA Calisthenics on social media. Come check us out. Sir, Mr. Sandell, we salute you. We welcome you to the family. <laughs> Thanks so much, Q. Honor to be a part of the team. <laughs>